In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God is one God, Amen. Christ is risen. Christos in us. Um. Today, as you know, is the, one of the minor feasts of the Lord, and we call it Thomas Sunday, but um, it's the first Sunday of the Holy 50 Days of the Resurrection. And during uh, the course of this time, as we said before, uh, during the Great Lent, we have a special journey that leads to our death and resurrection with the Lord. And that's why baptism is a, is a theme then. And we start the week, if you remember, on what day? Uh, well, what I mean, of course, every day, the Sunday is the first day of the week, as, as we'll see. Um, but in terms of the, the Katamiros, or the daily readings of the Great Lent, we have eight weeks, right? And each week has a theme. And the theme starts on which day? Sunday or Monday? Monday. Okay, so it starts on Monday and it ends on Sunday because we're working up to celebrating the resurrection. I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago, right? But during the Holy 50 days, what day do we start on? We start on Sunday because we're celebrating the resurrection. So we're looking, so in the Great Lent, we're looking towards the resurrection. And in the Holy 50, we're remembering the resurrection. Okay, so we start with, with, with Sunday. Um, <clears throat> but anyway... This day in particular, like we said, um, it's, the, it's the continuation of the gospel of the Feast of the Resurrection in John chapter 20. And some other churches, uh, especially in the early church, like uh, with, with some of the fathers, um, they consider this day not just the day of Thomas, um, but they call it the New Sunday. Because it's the first Sunday after the resurrection, or it marked the eighth day um, as as we'll see, because the first day of the week is Sunday. So then we say, uh, on the next Sunday, the Lord appeared to his disciples, um, with, again, with, with, when Thomas was with them. Um, so this was the eighth day. And so the eighth, the number eight reminds us not only of resurrection, but of newness. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit um, soon. <coughs> um, but even in some of the writings of the fathers, they talk about this theme um, on this day in particular. Um, <clears throat> but we'll just contemplate a little bit on the gospel today. And I know you probably can't read. Uh, well, I don't know why it's doing that, but um, you can't see it. But anyway, and I'll, I'll read the gospel to you. Oh, here it is. Um, and, and then um, the idea here is, remember how we were saying on Good Friday that uh, on the Great Friday that the cross gives us many gifts and many blessings. And so we'll continue that theme today and say, what are the blessings of today that we see in the gospel from, from uh, the events that transpired um, on, on this day? Um, so we'll read it quickly and then you just think of maybe some of the blessings uh, that you see. Then at the same day, at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain them, you're, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of many, they are retained. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. This was before. Then the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see that the, his, in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, here's that number eight, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put, my, in, put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. 
Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name and glory be to God forever. So in terms of any of the blessings, did you notice any? Yes. Hmm? He breathed on his disciples. Yes, very good. That's one of, and, and what is this breath? The, the Holy Spirit that's given. So this is not the same. So the Holy Spirit comes and he gives different gifts and different blessings, right? So the gift of the Holy Spirit that was granted to the church on the day of Pentecost is different than this breath, right? So the one on Pentecost is given to every believer on the day of their baptism and chrismation, right? Um, but this one, we'll get to it in a minute, is pertaining to the priesthood, right? <clears throat> um, but before that, the Lord says something three times in the gospel today. When he comes to them, peace. peace, right? So that's we say the first blessing of the, the the resurrection of the Lord is that He grants us a peace. So when the Lord is with us, we experience His peace, right? And that's why in the church, like one of the the first greetings that or blessings that the priest gives um, from the Lord to the people is when He says, "Peace be with you all." And this is prevalent in, in both the Old and New Testament. We don't have time to go into to the depth of all of this. Um, but like in the Psalms, it says, May the Lord bless his people with peace. And in the hymn that we chanted many times during the Passion Week, O King of Peace, grant us your peace. And we say this not only in the Passion Week, but we say this in the feasts. Like if you remember on the night of the feast when we came in, we didn't say Christ is risen because we had done the... Um, the reenactment yet so we came in with O king of peace and on the major feasts we, we do this um, <clears throat> but the idea here is as saint paul says in romans we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ because he was crucified on the cross for our sakes and rose from the dead he granted us the reconciliation with with god our father um, and as saint paul says in this in many of his epistles and even um this was the apostolic greeting. So in the beginning and the end of most of his epistles, as well as the other apostles, they, they start with um, uh, grace and peace most of the time. Um, but in Second Thessalonians, he says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in all ways. The Lord be with all of you. Um, so the idea here is where the Lord is, there is peace. And when we are with the Lord, we are granted peace despite what is going on outside like if you if you heard or if you noticed many of the, the stories of, of of the families of the martyrs they were granted peace i was amazed that um one the, the i believe it was either the daughter or the the, the wife of, of one of the martyrs who were killed <clears throat> she was being interviewed so um she was saying we for whoever it was who did it we forgive you because christ grants us the, the power uh, to, to forgive. We have nothing against him. He, he, he's in a much better place than, than we can even uh, imagine. Um, uh, and so she was comforted by the Lord of peace despite the difficult circumstances that had happened. So that's the first, the blessing that we see. The second one, um, when he showed them his hands and his side, the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So uh, joy and gladness is obviously um, a production a, uh, or a, a result of being with the Lord. So God grants us this peace, but he also grants us joy that no one can take away from us. Let me say this is one of the fruit of the Spirit. So where the Holy Spirit is, if we are um, earthen vessels of the Holy Spirit, then the 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 three first fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Um, and as St. Paul says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. One second. Okay. 
Um, also, well, you can just listen. Also, he says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy uh, in the Holy Spirit. Um, and also, in, in one of the discourses that the Lord gave us before his crucifixion, and that gave his disciples in John chapter 16, he says, therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. So this is the same idea that when we have the experience of the Lord being with us, he gives us a joy that no one, can, no matter what they say or do to us, they can't take away our inner joy. And it says, and that day you'll ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name, ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. Um, so the experience of the believer in the resurrected Christ is that we have joy and that's why we have the joyful tune that's why um, we, we don't use the morning tune at all that's why we don't necessarily um, uh, fast at all these 50 days even Wednesday and Friday we don't fast because we're experiencing the presence of the resurrected Lord yes we 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 abstain from food before we take communion, but all the liturgies are early in the day. Okay, <clears throat> but it's the only time of the year where Wednesday and Friday there there is no uh, fasting. The third blessing that we see is what we were talking about before. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, "Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained." So here, the gift was granted to the disciples or the apostles, the, the, the first priests, right? And this this grace is also granted to, to the priests of, of today as well. On their ordination, the bishop blows, you know, on their face in the same way. Um, but this is not just, so this is not a gift that is just given to the priest, it's given to the whole church. Because why did the Lord give this gift to the priests? He says right here, like, was it just to, to give them, like, a special blessing? He's giving them the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, of the priesthood, for the sake of the people, right? For the sake of the forgiveness of their sins. So the idea here is that any gift that God gives us, it's not for us. It's for others, right? Whether it's the priesthood or the service or the preaching or giving to the poor, it's not, it's not for me. It's for others. So if we don't use that gift, then God won't give us, or he might even take it uh, away. Um, so any gift that you receive is a benefit uh, for all. But more importantly, um, this, this gift is for the forgiveness uh, of our sins. We, we only have forgiveness through Christ's death and resurrection. And he revealed this when he granted the priesthoods the, the priests of, of the, the, the first church, the power to forgive sins. Of course, this is based on, on Christ and the teachings of the Lord. And the, the, uh, they were not allowed to misuse this blessing at all. Notice, you know, Jude, Judas was not here at the time. He didn't. Grant, so some people say, well, why didn't he grant this blessing beforehand? Well, first of all, because the disciples hadn't experienced the death and resurrection yet. Um, and second of all, because the Lord is planning or he, he's preparing his disciples and the church for for the, the new birth, which is on the day of Pentecost. Um, so again, first we receive peace. Secondly, we receive joy. Third, we receive the forgiveness of our sins. Um, fourth is probably the most prominent of of, of today's readings um, is the, the faith in him because Thomas doubted, but he wasn't the only one who doubted. Um, and, and that's why at the end, St. John says, these things were written, why? That you may believe. There's many things that Christ did, but especially the things that were in the gospel is for the, the to bolster our faith, to encourage us to believe in him in anything and in everything. And that's why the Lord said, do not be unbelieving, but believing. Um, and 
And he says, because you have seen you, me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Um, and through the power of the resurrection, we don't just believe that Christ is risen from the dead, but we believe that he has the power over all things, uh, including my weakness, including uh, my ability to, overpower, to, to overcome sin or overcome um, my infirmities uh, spiritually or to, to give me the, the grace to follow his commandments. This is the faith that we have to believe in, especially in this time. And then finally, the last blessing is the eternal life. He says, blessed are those who have not seen and believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Believing you may have life in his name. Um, and this is what the fathers talk most about during this day, because having life in his name means we have to have a new new look on life, but a new life in general, new, new actions, new dealings, new words, um, uh, a new experience um, with the Lord. Not just after we're baptized, but every day is a new day with him. As St. Paul says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Um, and as St. Paul says again in the Romans, he says, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And St. Gregory, when he was talking about um, the, the this on this day, he referred to uh, Psalm 50 when he says, create in me a clean heart and no right spirit within me. He says, just like David seeks to have a clean heart, he says, it's, he, he didn't ask because he didn't have these things. He, he said, who, if not the great David, would have these things? But because he understood new to mean whatever is improved on in a regular basis. Meaning, we say, God, give me this new life. Well, he has given us new life um, in when we were baptized or every time we repent and confess and take communion. But we feel this newness, newness daily. Um, Every day, our relationship with Christ is renewed. Um, that's why every morning we remember the resurrection. Because I'm going to start a new day with, with the Lord. It's not going to be like the other days. It's going to be even better. Also, he says this, St. Gregory says, this is the day of the anniversary of the gift of salvation. Um, because like we said, he said that day, or the resurrection, marks salvation. He says this day is the anniversary of the gift of salvation. He um, says that one marks the resurrection from the tomb. This day marks the second rebirth that we have through Christ who was uh, resurrected from the tomb. Okay. Um, so just to summarize, we said the first blessing is peace. The second one, joy. Third, forgiveness, faith, and life. Okay, and this is the new life in Christ. And just to conclude, we'll, we'll um, just read a passage from St. Gregory, the, the theologian, about uh, on, on this day, um, showing how, kind of like we, we, we read this actually in the beginning of the Passion Week, um, not the same passage, but he was showing us how to walk the steps with the Lord and put our place in the different figures of the people that um, that interacted with him during those the, the Passion Week, so he does the same thing, but in a different light. He says he wants me to carry his cross with him, like Simon of Cyrene. He wants me to see him, like Mary Magdalene, on the day of the tomb, uh, on the day of the resurrection last Sunday. He wants me to believe in him, like Thomas today. He wants me to dine with him and to commune with him, like the two two disciples on the road to Emmaus, which was. Monday, uh, the, the Easter Monday, the day after um, the resurrection, we read from Luke 24, where the two disciples on the road to Emmaus are um, speaking with a man, and then they eat with him, and finally he breaks bread with them and reveals to them himself, um, who is the risen Christ. He wants me to be resurrected with him like Lazarus. Let me go deeper into faith 
deeper into reading, deeper into contemplation, deeper into virtues, especially the virtue of love. Let me come and see, like he says to St. Andrew in the beginning of the Gospel of John. He says, let me see and believe like St. John the Beloved did when he looked into the tomb. He saw and believed like we read last Sunday. Let me taste and see that the Lord is sweet. This is the, these are the days in which we taste and see that the Lord is sweet. We have walked with him to the cross. We have suffered with him through, through the fast, giving up the, the things of this world. And now we have come to see that the Lord is good and sweet, and we want to live with him. We don't forget him during these days. We actually are more close to him during these 50 days than uh, because we're, we're reaping the fruit of the labor that we have sown during the Lent. May the Lord give us this new life in Christ today and every day. And glory be to God now through into the age of